Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hope you had a restful weekend. Um, is there anybody who's actually present at Thornton Academy right now? Hi, Sarah. Anybody else in there with you? All right. Makes my job a little bit easier here to start. Looks like Ben is maybe on his way to you. Just let me know when you uh, arrive proper there, Ben, and drive safely. Okay, um, welcome back to chemistry. Uh, I think that we have a better feeling that you guys did do better on that 2.5 than you had done on the previous quizzes. Um, if you are still struggling with it, we are still going to have some practice. Um, it's not like it's just going to go away. We're gonna have you guys be balancing equations for quite some time still. So, you know, if it is something that you, that you need to talk to me about or find some time, um, to do a little bit of practice with me. Uh, I've got those office hours on Wednesday, but it's not a huge deal. And you can always ask questions, you know, to kind of clarify those things with me. We are gonna move on. Um, we're gonna talk about the types of reaction that might occur, right? How do chemicals react with each other? And what signs do we have as scientists to tell when those reactions are occurring um, and when they're and when it's just a physical change. So we're gonna talk about the signs of reactions today um, and the types of reactions that might occur. Let me just fix my attendance. Tyler just came in here. All right, um, it's just going to be a Google slideshow today. Uh, and then we've, I, I did a, I snuck into the lab sometime last week and did a a number of reactions and recorded it for a demonstration. So we're gonna watch, we're gonna do these slides. You're gonna watch that demonstration. You're gonna fill out kind of a, a questionnaire regarding that. And uh, that'll be it for today. We got a daily quiz at the end of the day. Um, if you guys feel like there's, if we're rushing or if you guys really prefer that the daily quizzes come, you know, next day, like we used to do it, um, I'll have a questionnaire either today or tomorrow, but you could always also send me an email, you know, communication is key right now more than ever. Okay, so there are, um,
Are you going to see in a white screen? Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. Thank you. All right. We're just going to do it this way then. Can you guys see this or is this a black screen now? Black screen. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Some technical difficulties for a Monday morning. Try this part again. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'll do this one actually. <clears throat> Um, okay, so like I was saying, we as scientists look for a couple of different ways that we can tell that a chemical reaction is occurring. And we also, there, there are certain categories that these chemical reactions fall into. Um, so if you don't have a notebook, I, I would strongly suggest you have something available to write these down. Right, Today is just kind of going to be a memorization day. There's like a terminology and then there's like a, a process. So uh, if you've got the opportunity to write it down, I promise it will make the daily quiz significantly easier. If you've got them written down right next to you, you can, you can take a look at that. All right. So first, let's do a really quick reminder. Um, what exactly is a chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is a chemical change in which substances are broken down and, and, and uh, they're, they're recombined into something new, right? So bonds are broken and new bonds are formed. We go from one substance to a new substance. That's how a, a chemical reaction, that's a definition for a chemical reaction. Right, uh, as opposed to a physical reaction where we might change its shape or its its size or something like that. Um, and when we do that, we don't actually change the material itself. In a chemical reaction, we're changing the stuff. Right, we're going from H2O2 hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen or something like that. Right, two entirely new substances that came from, uh, or in this case, the combustion of hydrogen. Right, we have hydrogen and oxygen they react with each other and now they have entirely new properties because of the way that they're bound together. We can break those into reactants and products. Reactants, um, their, their bonds are broken uh, and then the, in products new bonds are formed or, or the bonds are never reformed and we just have a simpler molecule. All right uh, and then now on to the, the meat and potatoes of today's lecture. Um, there are four signs generally, generally accepted by, you know, chemists. There are four signs that we can use to tell if a chemical reaction is occurring. The, I'd say the, the most common one is something that we call the evolution of a gas. If you add two things together and they start to bubble nine times out of 10, that is a chemical reaction. There are some exceptions. Right, something like your Coca-Cola, um, it's super saturated with carbon dioxide gas. So that's a, a, a gas that has been dissolved in the water and that's not quite a chemical reaction. But, it, but anything else across the spectrum, um, that's going to show you that a chemical reaction is occurring. If you add two things together and a bunch of bubbles form, you've got a chemical reaction there. The next one is probably my favorite. Um, when you have two liquids and you combine them and you form a precipitate, right? If you combine them in a solid form, so on the on the right hand side here, we see that kind of cloudy brown stuff, and those are little tiny particles. If you notice really carefully at this video, you'll see that at the very top of this, it starts to become clear again as that solid kind of settles down to the bottom, and that would be true on the right and the left hand side too with that um, lead chloride. So. Two liquids together form a solid sign of chemical reaction. If we have the evolution of some energy, either energy is sucked into it or like in a cold pack in one of those like crackable cold packs or energy is released from it, uh, it, it gets hot like, like one of those little uh, hand warmers or like a glow stick. Those things are releasing energy from the chemicals themselves. Right, the chemicals beforehand had more energy stored up inside of them. We break those chemicals apart, and when we break them apart, some of that energy is released, 
and, and we can see that in either light or heat. And sometimes if we're building a more complex molecule, we have to put energy into it in order to do that. Um, so if we are, if we have some change in energy, uh, potential energy in those chemicals, we have had some chemical reaction. So signs of that would be like light or uh, heat. And the last one in so far as uh, chemical reactions and their evidence is concerned is a change in color. On the left-hand side, we have um, the oxidation of iron that, that's rusting, right? Iron is combining with oxygen to form rust. We have a significant color change there, right? It goes from that like gray, shiny gray to this you know, deep red. That's a change in color. That change in color is due to new atoms bonding onto that iron and changing the way that the light interacts with it. On the right hand side, we have a reaction called the stoplight reaction. Um, the GIF, you know, the, the Google slides only let me upload a GIF of a certain size. So this would go from red to yellow to green. Um, that's a chemical reaction, right? Those chemicals are inside are, are changing constantly. And as they change, uh, the light again interacts with it differently, and we have new chemicals inside of there. So as a summary, for those of you guys taking notes, and I was going pretty fast there because I knew that this slide was coming up. Um, we have four signs of chemical reaction. The first one, we have the evolution of a gas, right? It bubbles. The second one, we have the formation of a precipitate. That means that we have two liquids combined and a solid forms. The next one, um, we have the absorption of energy. In this case, we've got the, the uh, chemical called thermite in that picture. Thermite gets, you know, so hot, it's almost as hot as the surface of the sun, right? It's an outrageously exothermic reaction that also produces a ton of light, right? So we have light, we have a heat given off. That's definitely a chemical change that's occurred there. And lastly, we have color change. So if you have any of these four, you know that you've got a chemical reaction that has occurred. Um, I'm going to take a second and let you guys write this down. And the evolution of a gas, sometimes the bubbles are so small that you can hardly see them. In the, if that's the case, you'll probably have a smell, right? Because smells come from, you know, particles in the air that our nose interacts with. So um, it's not always so obvious as like bubbling over like in a cartoon, but sometimes it is. Uh, ben, are you actually in class now? I lose Ben all the time. Oh, no. no, no, no. Driving. Okay, sorry. Keep driving. Just let me know when you get there. All right, throw me the thumbs up if you're ready for me to move on. Except for Ben, you drive. All right, about half the class. Give it another couple seconds. Okay. Um, next, we're going to talk about the type of reactions that. Um, chemicals might follow, right? So there's a certain, there, there are certain ways that chemicals have a tendency to react with each other. And, you know, we as human beings like to, to pigeonhole things, right? We like to have names for things and, and we like to organize things. So we did that with the types of chemical reactions as well. Um, a, a lot of chemists will tell you that there are five different types of reactions. I'd say it's probably split 50-50. But I don't, I don't like that idea. We have this last type, this combustion. Combustion is really uh, just another synthesis reaction. It's just another way to combine chemicals. It's just a kind of a very special way. So I think of that as a subset of, of a synthesis reaction. 
Um, but you will see if you if you know if you go online, you might see that there are five different type, types of chemical reaction. They will include combustion, and again, I think that's unfair to the rest of them. Combustion is not that special. Okay, um, so the first type of reaction is a single replacement reaction. In a single replacement reaction, we have um, two chemicals that are bonded together, and another chemical kind of swoops in and takes the place of one of the chemicals, right? That would mean that A is slightly more reactive than B. B is okay with being by, by themselves. Uh, A and C prefer each other. So we have replaced one single replacement, right? Switched in this reaction. So we have two reactants at the start. We have two products at the start. 99% of the time, this is going to be an, an element like, like zinc or like, um, copper or, or like a metal of some kind and it's going to sneak in here and it's going to replace one of these but sometimes it's a halogen we have we have other reactions too but most of the time it's going to be a metal switching out for another metal in in an ion right and we've got this little you know dancery do down here shouldn't look so sad but some formatting stuff going on there. So far so good on this. Um, in a double replacement, it's, it's a lot like a single replacement, but instead of only switching out one, um, we're switching out two, right? So it's like a tradesy um, where a switches with D and B switches with C to form two entirely new compounds, but all the elements are, the, are still going to be the same. Um, we saw a lot of these in our balancing equations with what we call the polyatomic ions, where we just kind of uh, take the whole bits and kind of switch them around. Um, if that's the case, um, there's going to be two reactants and two products. So if you see two reactants and two products, you know that you either have a single replacement or a double replacement reaction. All right, so that's kind of a, uh, a hint. Um, if there is a double replacement reaction, there will always be one of these signs of chemical reactions. There will always be either a solid precipitate that forms, a gas that is produced, or it will produce water in the case of an acid-base reaction, as I think that I did in the, in the video. Um, here are some cool images of double replacement reactions. In the top, we've got that lead nitrate and sodium iodide forming that uh, that yellow lead uh, iodide. Beautiful! It's, it's, it is actually that vibrant in real life too. It's really a wild reaction. Um, the next one, if you have an acid and a base and they react with each other, if you get the proportions right, they actually just make salt water, which is which is pretty cool. Um, I was going to put the 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 gif from Fight Club in here where the where he kisses his hand and then he puts lye on it. Uh, and then he hits it with vinegar and it, and it neutralizes that lye, right? Lye is like sodium hydroxide and, and potassium hydroxide mixed together, right? Um, then the acid he uses is acetate, so it wouldn't really work out that way. But, um, you know, movie magic, uh, you'd, you'd still be burning like crazy, you know, burn almost right through your hand. Not a good idea. Um, and the last one, we'd have calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is like a shell. If you hit a shell with acid, right, it dissolves really quickly. And that's a problem that we're, so, we're, we're facing kind of across the world with, with coral reefs and the acidification of the oceans, right? There's so much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that it's making the ocean, um, uh, when, when, when waves come down and crash carbon dioxide and push carbon dioxide into a liquid, um, you get something called carbonic acid, which is why things like soda are so acidic, right? You don't want to drink... Uh, Coca-Cola right before you go to bed because it will literally um, dissolve your teeth um, as you sleep. So, so for that reason, you know, it's bad. Don't do it. Decomposition is when we have a complex molecule that breaks into its pieces. Um, the classic decomposition reaction that we have is something like uh, hydrogen peroxide that is a fairly unstable compound that breaks into water and oxygen to significantly more stable compounds. So in this case, we've got A and A, B, and it splits into A and B, right? Like that, that uh, 
couple down at the bottom. Next we have synthesis reactions. Synthesis reactions are when two simpler molecules combine to form um, complex molecules. But really all it is, all it means is that we're switching things up like crazy, right? It's really hard. We have two things, they combine into one or more products, right? So down here we have a synthesis reaction that we've seen before, or maybe it's the opposite of one that we've seen before, where we've got sugar and oxygen um, it breaks down into hydrogen, uh, excuse me, water and carbon dioxide, right? This is what your body does with food all the time. It's strange to think of it as synthesis, but we have uh, two particles that entirely break apart and rearrange to a significant degree. That's going to be a synthesis reaction. So far, so good. The last one is combustion. Um, combustion, like I said, is just a, a, on a, a subset of synthesis reactions. In fact, the, the example I gave here is a combustion reaction. Combustion occurs when we have carbon or, or some other particle that reacts with oxygen. It releases a bunch of heat um, or, or, or energy of some kind inside of our body. It does release a bunch of heat, but it also reaches, releases a bunch of you know, organic energy. Um, and when we have a complete combustion, perfect combustion, we create only carbon dioxide and water. So in your cars, right, you should be able to, to burn your, uh, burn the, the gasoline in your car to such a point that you only are releasing carbon dioxide and water. The issue is that we rarely have perfect combustion, right? If there aren't quite enough oxygen sitting around or if the, the um, carbons in that hydrocarbon end up smashing together to form really big particles, uh, you end up with incomplete combustion. And when you have incomplete combustion, you have a different colored flame because it, it releases less energy, right? If we were burning everything perfectly, like in my fireplace upstairs, when I burn wood, it, it is never a complete combustion, right? A complete combustion, you wouldn't have any smoke. You'd only have carbon dioxide and water, right? Um, in, a, in, a, in a good combustion, like in your car, but not quite perfect, you might have this thing right here where you produce a yellow flame. And ideally, you will never have this totally incomplete combustion inside of your car because it creates soot, which is smoke. I just thought that that might be a little bit interesting for you guys. Questions or concerns? Do you guys want me to go through the slides uh, again without talking so you guys just have a moment to write them all down? How do you feel? Why don't you guys throw up the party doodle if that sounds like a good idea to you? All right, I'll go through each one really quickly and I'll kind of just let you guys know what to write down. See if this will work yet. I would write down, how do I highlight? Hmm. I'd write down this right here right, this general formula. And I'd also probably write down this part right here. Two reactants, two products. Because if it has one reactant um, forming two products, you know that it's not going to be a replacement, right? It's kind of a, a quick and, and easy way to identify one of the types of the reactions at least. Next is a double replacement. And again, double replacement, I would write down this up here. Right, this is general formula where A switches with C and B switches with D, everybody switches. Right, and then we've got this image Penguin likes the glasses, the pig likes the hat, they switch, everybody's happy.
decomposition, we have a complex molecule becoming a more simplistic molecule. And lastly, we have a synthesis reaction in which um, two simple molecules generally become a more complex molecule. But again, that's not always the case. In the case of combustion, you've got complex molecules becoming more simplistic. Most often, you will have two reactants and one product. All right, let's try our hand. Let's see if we can play this. Is this still just a white screen for you guys? This is, oh, there we go. Okay, in this first one, what do we have? Looks like we have a fairly complex molecule plus a fairly simple molecule making two kind of entirely new molecules. All right, we can't call it a double replacement because oxygen exists in both of them. And this is what we call a carbohydrin plus oxygen. And we're making carbon dioxide and water. I think this is a combustion reaction. So I think that this is a synthesis. In the next one, we have two on this side and two on this side. So it isn't a decomposition. It looks like our hydrogen here and our sodium here are swapping places, right? To form HOH, also known as H2O. I think that this is a double replacement. Here we have one particle becoming two particles. That is a decomposition. For we have two simple elements becoming a, in this case, a, an ionic compound, a salt. But we'll just say it's a molecule, right? So, it's, so silver and sulfur form a, a more complex. This is synthesis. Um, hmm. Then we have magnesium carbonate breaking down into magnesium oxide carbon dioxide. One particle becoming two. That's decomp. Decomposition. And the last one, we have chlorine and potassium bromide. And it looks like these two were not meant to be together. Chlorine sneaks in here. Bromine gets bumped off, right? This is a single replacement. Questions or concerns that you guys have for this material?
Is there anybody that wants me to show the demonstration video through this Zoom call, or are you guys all okay with going and clicking on the link in the assignment? If you want me to show it, toss me up the party doodle. Clicking the link is probably better. All right, so everybody agrees with you, Jacob. Um, thanks for letting me know. Let's, let's take some time. We'll say we'll reconvene at 10 o'clock. I think that the video is six minutes. That gives you guys um, 24 minutes, a little under 24 minutes now to, to complete that worksheet. If you don't finish the worksheet, it's not a huge deal. Um, it, it is just homework. So if you, you know, get as much of it done now as you can. Again, if you can't finish that uh, now, that's, that's totally okay. I'm gonna go over most of it with, with the class anyway before the daily quiz. So let's take our time now, go to Google Classroom. On Google Classroom, you'll find unit five, day three, um, chemical reaction demo, I think is what it's called. And why don't you guys try your hand at that? I will be here. I'm gonna actually put you guys in breakout rooms so that you can have a little bit of privacy. Um, and then we'll reconvene at 10 o'clock. Any questions for the class before I, before I set you guys off on your task? Okay, good luck.